Sunday morning occupation is setting up fencing for the horses. Today we don't have any visitors this morning, so the horses are on the driveway grazing the long acre. But I've set up, you can see there's a length of electric fence here. So this is three paddocks. This is going to be divided into three paddocks. And I've put a fence here, and this is divided into three paddocks. And they just finished grazing. This was where they were grazing yesterday and last night is underneath this huge, huge larch tree. And there's another larch tree. And then there's a lime tree. They were grazed, that was the first paddock they were grazing in. And there was a second paddock here. And this was the third paddock. So that top area, you can see the electric fence, that's gonna be there paddock when they come off of the long acre. So paddock grazing horses has been great for regenerative farming, the soil, because they're pooing all over the place. The dog's having a great race. Some people say doing the electric fence makes it a lot of hard work, but there's no noise except for traffic on the road, the dogs playing, and then the birds singing. Sometimes the dogs playing is the most noisy. But with regenerative agriculture, because I'm spreading the horses around, their manure goes to places that it never went before. They also eat grasses that they, they don't really like as much, which means they don't overgraze. Overgrazing is one of the main issues about farming and losing your multi-species sward. So as I walk back over time, if you will, this was, here you can see a horse skidded to a halt. This was a day when it was raining a lot, but it's already, the grass is already recovering. So if I keep walking backwards over the last few weeks, you can see the grasses are recovering. There's getting more. You can see the clovers coming on. So keep walking back in time. Sometimes I'm a bit messy and forget to pick up a bit of electric fence that I've dropped, so I'll have to pick that up. Here's another day that was particularly wet. You can see the streak marks the horses have left, but they only streaked marked this particular area. They didn't streak mark there, and they didn't streak mark there. So if they would had the whole field, they would have done a lot more damage. I also sowed this area with mixed species. So as you can see, the further I go back in the month that they've been in this, I think this is a, I think this is like a two and a half acre field. 
So they've been in this field for about a month. But as I go back in time, you can see the grass now is getting a really good height to it. And I keep going back in time. I'd say this is well over a month ago, actually. I think they've been in here a long time, over a month. And this is the area that I reseeded and kept the rams off of a while ago. So that is like really grown a lot. You can see the height on my boots and that's grown even more. So that's what regenerative agriculture does and mob grazing. And mob grazing is definitely a way to regenerate land because the livestock eats stuff that isn't as palatable, but it grazes it down, which is, gives the diversity a chance to recover rather than going to, um, the horses going to one special location to their favorite section of Timothy or orchard fog or something that's sweeter to them. This way they have to graze it all. I used to have a problem here with uh, grasses that sheep and horses didn't like. Now, because I've been mob grazing it with horses, a lot of other grasses have gotten into the mixture, so it's much better. Yes, there's a thistle right there. But this is, uh, there was an old saying a farmer once told me, if you graze it, you race it. If you mow it, you slow it. And this mob grazing, definitely you race after your, the regrowth in a big way. So anyway, there's the dogs playing. These three terrors are enjoying it when I'm doing the electric fencing.